Hey guys, this is Killer Rob speaking and today we are back in automation with our light campaign v4.0 Let's play playing as Superico Inc with Hans Dieter Kraus. Oh, so sorry Dr. Hans Dieter Krause. Yes, uh, we, we can't drop that one. No, he, he would be very upset uh, Anyway, we are currently in a pretty interesting position while well, the economy is tanking uh, but we don't really seem to care at the moment. Oh, no, it's still kind of kind of growing, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind kind of growing mm, It's just above zero, but very much slowing down. I'm expecting a pretty harsh decline there, but our cars are doing very well and Yeah, the affordability is a bit in the toilet there and competitors have come out, but they're still selling and then we've just released the um, that is the second facelift or oh, the first facelift which is the, the second version of the Gurnard and decided to uh, go forward not with a third facelift but rather the woodpecker which was the whole last episode and we found a little bit of a an interesting case and that is the utility segment uh, family utility to be exact and they they really liked um, Hans Dieter's engine but before they can get into those fantastic mileages with very little top speed, um, we have to wait a few years. Mm, that is four years, a little bit more. 50 months was what we were able to cram this out. Of. Also, monocoque chassis. We managed that. That is, that is fantastic. So, yeah, minus two quality on that one, though. Mm, mm, something to keep in mind. Uh, anyway, let's have another look at research. That is looking like we are pretty close to having level 2. So maybe we just want to up it for a month and then put it back down so that we nail it there at plus 2. Although, on the other hand, we have a few years where we are not designing anything. We've just made this prototype engine. That was the main thing, uh, one of the main things last time as well. So prototype engine. Uh, inline 4. This is our prototype, and as soon as the new car launches, we are going to uh, facelift this one and make it production ready and put it into the first facelift of the Woodpecker. Ah, uh, there's more scary loans, of course. That was the, the main big concern. Uh, woodpecker, yes. Ouch. 640 million as a repay. Monthly repayment is 6.4 million once it kicks off. Uh, once it starts production and I don't think we have um, No, I don't think that will have passed Oh 1946 to oh, maybe actually maybe we have until then paid that one off That will be interesting to see some more information about that what at what date that will be fully paid off for both the engine and What did we take out a loan for the? We did Okay, that's stupid. I didn't want to take out a loan for that one, but all right, all right, all right. That's that's fine. Uh, it's just a few hundred k. Um, and oh, okay, it's looking good. So let's forward and see how our sales go and jump into the production of our new um, new model. Currently, things are going exceptionally well. Nine point five million per month. I think uh, the taxman will be very happy to hear that. Ooh, our awareness is starting to look pretty solid. Yeah, 19%, 20% in, 21% almost in uh, city. That's yeah, looking good. Covering all kinds of segments. All right, this is looking like perfect, absolutely perfect sales and stuff. Like plus 4 million here still per month. Massive massive amount of margin we can sell this for and that is still at decent competitiveness despite the affordability now being pretty low this is going to the premium markets so good this car is so damn good because of fuel economy of course but what I'm going to do here is to wait with increasing the stock target um, before like 1954 starts that still gives us a year to build up our stock 
Um, and also the demand will have shrunk a bit more. I do want to get rid of my inventory a little or I'll continue my sales properly while we are still in a somewhat functioning economy. Because it's easy to build up stock when no one wants your cars, you know? But uh, yeah, we are getting there. Although, maybe this is bottoming out already? Or is it going to drop after that? So now we're in 1954. This has stabilized. Is this all already? It's a very flat bottom. If it kick, kicks down again from there, then we are fucked. Uh, <laughs> well, not, not, not that much. I mean, we have plenty of money in the bank now. Um, but yeah, I'm going to increase the, the target stock levels to... How long does it take? Over a year. So 15 months is our target. Uh oh, the economy is sliding from there. This was a false bottom. But with us doing so exceptionally well, I think it is time to invest a little bit into um, some of the other tech. And why not, for instance, interior and driver assist? It's getting getting expensive, but we're yeah, it's, we're making good profit. And I think we should be spending around 500k. Yeah, something like this maybe. Free and body, so that we unlock the latest. Although we could argue that we mm, don't need quite as much. Driver assists. Uh, let's put another one in exhaust. That's pretty cheap. And another one in driver assists. Okay, yeah. That looks like a pretty good makeup. Um, yeah, there's a lot of research going on then. Oh, okay. Uh, we have not increased our marketing in prestige. That is uh, a bit of an oversight. Uh, that, Especially with the, this income, we definitely need to do this. So let's put two in there, four in there, five in drivability. Yeah, I think that's... Oh, that's a little expensive though. Um, so let's go like this. We do want to ha be in the positive at least. And target level two, yeah, yeah, we're pretty close to the target level there. And this will be super inexpensive to do. Like, look at that, you can just hammer it. Uh, yeah, reputation level, drivability, that's basically no costs. And 32k for that, yeah, means we can sell a few cars here and there. It's decent. Um, but what are our sales in Delua? Is that even worth it? That is a good question. So, let's see, current revenue. Well, that's not much. <laughs> it's not much. We are uh, we are selling cars for a total of 90k. Hmm. Well, let's say we're investing into the future of our company with gaining reputation and so on. Uh, yeah, hopefully that, that helps. And we should be seeing the effect now of, of this while we're selling cars and stuff, so... Oh yes, it's increasing increasing rapidly. Whoa! That marketing campaign really pays off. Look at that. And we're almost sold out of cars already. That's not good. Ooh, ouch, ouch, ouch. Four, uh, 34 million in taxes. Yeah, that's not what we needed. But our sales are still holding up a little bit. Well, no, not really. We're currently selling 33 million. This is the income here is from the loan. <laughs> Deceiving, I know. And there we have it. Okay. Holy shit, this is looking good. This is looking really solid. Have we done it? Have we escaped the, the hole that is the start of a, a difficult game? Mm, it looks like it. It looks like it, but the economy is turning down again after. A complete dead cat bounce. <laughs> it just barely got above zero and now it's trending down again. Not the best environment to sell your new car into. But eh, it's a good environment to sell your eco car into. But wow! Holy shit, this one is doing well. Look at that. That is a lot. It's also very equal sales. Um, Where do we have our sales sitting at the moment? Uh, we can take a look at monthly sales data. In Delua, sorry, no cars left for Delua. No, no, there they are. And limited awareness. Okay, so 20, uh, that's a few. That's a few, what is our current revenue? 
300, okay, now it's actually reasonable, I'll say it's in the lure to uh, have us spend a bit of extra money. Um, and if we go for Farinia, whew, yeah, that's, that's quite solid. That is quite solid. How about, oh, hit, what? Okay, 800 cars into the commuter segment, that's perfect. So overall, all the markets we are selling into, Yes, look at that. Nice spread, even going into utility. Uh, family utility there, yep. That car is doing well. We need to check our research panel. Uh, 0.9 in everything. That is not quite what we want, although we are a fair bit through the year already, so it should have ticked over, yes. Uh, the effective year is um, the next one, so that's good. So we have an effect of plus one. Uh, that's all we need for that. So I think it's time for a facelift. First month facelift, here we come. Before we facelift though, I think what we should do is just check out the markets and see how well this thing is selling and, and why. Um, let's check our competitiveness. And that this uh, overview, the market info competitiveness screen shows you your best performing trim in each demographic and what competitiveness it has and also compares its stats to the average of the top three in this um, category that are not your cars and ooh, as you can see the average of the top three there they are selling it for quite a bit less and they have higher drivability even but we are just scoring so massively in the practicality segment and comfort is reasonably high too. Um, oh, also, they are equally efficient. That is not something we should tell Hans Dieter. I believe he would be uh, he would be freaking out a little, I guess. All right, the other one is the S52, and let's see. It has only 38 drivability. While the average of the top three is 45. Holy shit, they are capable of building cars. Uh, our economy is slightly better. Uh, but, yeah, we are scoring in all kinds of, of stats, but not really the ones I expected, really. Uh, I thought our drivability was pretty good. So, new car face lift. And we do want to switch out the engine. Oh, that will be... That will be fantastic, building the uh, first proper engine on the new basis, a new prototype basis. Uh, so this is looking good so far. We want to replace the engine, uh, this engine, the SE4-1100. And it will be the E56, of course. And uh, yeah, I think... Hans Dieter is not far when we are talking about engines. All right, so uh, we are we are back here with my new prototype. It's still looking great, uh, but we can improve it further. And that is exactly what I'm going to do here. You wanted more power, you said, you stupid, you stupid idiots. You, the, why do you need power? So let's just compare to the, the old engine, the, the prototype and then see what happens look i've given you a lot more power this is this is plenty power uh, you have 800 watts more i don't even know what you're going to do with that that's so much power but what i do know is that we want more quality in here because this is like plus plus three is not enough that is a uh, little weak weak sauce or what what do they say in the 20s 20, 2020s Weak, weak sauce, yes. Uh, that that is from from the future. Message from the future, yes. Um, fuel efficiency up to 16.8 percent, and we have very smooth engine now. 50, 50.1. I mean, we could rev this engine higher, but I don't see why we would, because it doesn't go anywhere anyway. So uh, this is not good for the reliability. And I think I'm just going to cut down the revs instead of up. You know, so who, who needs revs anyway? This is just the inefficient area starts at 2000. So 2000 to 5000 is, is not supposed to be used anyway. 
Oh, uh, maybe in highway driving can use 2100 or something. But uh, I would never go beyond that because it's too much friction in the engine then. But what we can do is increase the exhaust quality further. And that gives us better, better sound. Uh, no sound is better sound. And then we also get some more um, fuel efficiency. Because the, uh, the exhaust system is vitally important for the resonances and the resulting increase in scavenging of the exhaust gases. And with that, you get a, a, a better extraction and more efficiency for the for air pump function of the engine. It's, it's really intricate and I don't expect you idiots to understand that, but uh, th this is how it works, yes. Ah, oh, seems like uh, Hans Dieter is in a great mood today, yes? Uh, holy shit. Um, anyway, uh, I think he also wants to show off the new engine. Um, Hans Dieter, don't, don't, don't you want to show them what this engine sounds like? Oh yes, I forgot about that. Uh, wait a second. So, it doesn't fit for... What? Who made this stupid prompt? I don't care about front wheel drive right now. We don't have front wheel drive, so clo close this. And so we we have our engine and we're going to test it manually as always and just listen to its beautiful sound. Here you go. There. Like that's where I drive my engine, like there. This is good stuff. Yeah, it sounds beautiful there. I can I can I can hear it exactly. And if you really want to rev it high like highway here, it's all you need, yes? Okay, you, yeah, you, you've satisfied now. Yes, good. Well, that wasn't a surprise, but uh, good work, I guess. Good work. It looks like it's an efficient engine, and we we squeezed another horsepower out of him. <laughs> not, not the easiest thing these days. Uh, so what do we do with all this power? <laughs> uh, 10.2. Oh, oh, shit. We have some optimization work to do. Oh, we would be able to switch over to radial tires if we really wanted to. Hmm, it is a little tempting, but I think they might be too expensive at the moment. So we pay uh, 281 here, and in this configuration... Really? Is that all? If that were the case, then uh, hell yeah, we would be going for that. 320? That is a good increase. Huh... Because they are so damn thin, and really not much to... Let's see, if they... Ooh, okay, that makes it a lot more expensive. And these profiles, they are dirt cheap, but um, as soon as you start pumping them up a little, uh, like lower profiles, that is uh, going down the drain. Whoa, that's two whole percentage points, or almost. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, almost. Uh, one and a half or 1.4 percentage points difference in affordability. That is a big, big ouchie. So I think we're going to stay with 14 inches because we don't need more for the brakes anyway. And I just switched over to the commuter demographic so that we are comparing to the correct one. And let's see what they think about this. So that was a little excessive maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, that was good for the, um, very good for the utility focused um, demographic to have some more brake pad because they like to have over braked cars uh, because as soon as you load them down they are no longer over braked, <laughs> they actually under braked. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. Uh, we have 132, it's not bad, it's not bad, cooling airflow fine. Managed to get down the fuel economy a lot, as a to 8.4 there by just optimizing a li little bit. Um, yeah, one one step higher there is even even good there. Oh, 126 kilometers now only. 127. <laughs> that doesn't, doesn't change much. Um, right, we need to re-optimize a bit in the drivability department here in the steering behavior. But that is over to the suspension because that's a minor issue. Uh, that is fine here. Brakes are solid. We don't have the quality. We just don't have the quality yet. So it's tied to the model indeed. Uh, that's unfortunate. I think though 
that we do want to invest one point into this as it increases all our stats and stats are a good thing in the long run oh yeah i think we can afford one oh power steering we do have power steering if we wanted to that is a big time investment if we want to have a decent one uh if we take that out yeah hmm is it worth it that might be why the other cars have so much higher drivability the top three that is because they are already using hydraulic power steering and we are not considering it's the first facelift i think this is viable and we probably if we go for that we could also at the same time invest into safety that is a big investment but i guess it will be worth it again in the longer run Ah, yes, and we do have progressive springs now that will also help, especially comfort and our load rating, load capacity. Yeah, <laughs> doubles there, okay. Uh, good stuff. That is good stuff. Now, re-optimize this for 100% drivability, please. It actually looks like we are already at kind of the, the limit of this setup to get any higher. So let's turn this around by um, just upping this by five. Oof, that, that is a big jump. All right, we need to fix that then. But it's uh, usually better to end up with a larger tire size and then tune down, for performance that is, for general performance, rather than going with a smaller tire and then tuning up. Um, so let's see. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, look at these numbers. That is starting to look absolutely beautiful. Let's see what end of the spectrum we are on there. Uh, apart from the autism spectrum, that is, of course. We are, we are right, right there for that. And especially Hans Dieter, of course. Um, <clears throat> so, 99.8. Uh, is that the highest we can get? No, no, there, there we go. There we have it. That is 100. And we can probably tweak it down a little yes that's a bit cheaper on the maintenance as well for the tires radials after all you don't want to go through those too quickly well and look at that if that isn't competitive then i don't know what is this is looking really solid and now the same changes need to be made to the family utility version of it <laughs> one little thing we didn't quite do yet I think we are going to utilize that strat for some kind of hypermiling vehicle that uh, Hans Dieter eventually will inevitably want to build. Um, yeah, hard long life tires. Of course, family utility does benefit from the utility and practicality and that in, in of itself is dependent on load rating and hard long life tires just have stiffer sidewalls as well so they do carry more load. But the progressive springs will already do part of that job. And we're now in the ballpark here, 99.2. Uh, but I think, yeah, we're going with hard long life for those. Also, a little cheaper. We're keeping the exact same setup here. And I think we had a plus one rating on that. So that comes for free when it comes to the engineering. So we're going to take that. Of course, also a little bit more effort to put together production units goes up so maybe yeah but that is just like 40 bucks oh may yeah, i take it hydraulic power steering and did we have it at zero quality or plus one i think we put it to zero because that engineering time is a little awkward so um advanced safety in here as well and optimized steering behavior and now we have some juicy juicy stats in the family utility segment that is looking great. Oof, this is competitive. Really competitive. The only segments where our um, sedan is scoring better is, of course, commuter and the uh, city segments. Oh, this is looking good. How quick is this thing around the test? Qu quick? 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 Um, don't, don't tell Hans Dieter that we sent this on a test track. Holy shit, he would flip it. Oh, yeah, the acceleration. Can you even hear the car? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, revving to 5k. Uh, almost. And that acceleration, yo. <laughs> P 
perfect. Okay, what's what's your time? Four minutes and five seconds. I think that's a new record for uh, what cars I've been bu building. Uh, that is really fucking slow. Okay, we have our medium two factory ready to produce these new trims. Let's do it. Do we want to upgrade to level three? <laughs> oh, well, we are taking in so much money, actually. Company valuation has gone up. Maybe we should. How long does this upgrade? Oh, oh, fuck. 26. Nah. Well, it's a big build. That's a big build. Nah, 26. Hmm. Nah, no. What I'm going to do instead is put a QA testing in there. That's 200 million. That's a, a significant investment. But I think that will be worth it. And do we want to put another 150 mil on top of that? Ooh. Spicy. Spicy. That would really make it so that we can keep it efficient in factory costs. I heard you mentioned efficiency? Yes, Hans Dieter. Yes, what we are talking about factories. Well, if we put in two, that would be a little too much, though. Because that is upping the build time enormously. Um, if we are going with the upgrade there, 32, how much is it without these? 26, okay, so you can cram in one upgrade if you if you upgrade the, the size without upping the total build time much. They are vector added uh, at the moment. So, hmm, staff facilities, nah. But reduces the spread in build quality by 5% is quite nice. What I don't quite get here, is this a bug? Maybe it is. Uh, the build costs of the add-ons supposedly are just 54 million. Um, what does the, the sign-off screen think about that? Yeah, let's keep it at medium two, but eliminate the slowdown. I think that's a decent upgrade already. 12 months, I think we can stock up for that and go from there. So, yes, let's see um, if that is actually bugged or not. Well, it sure is bugged. Uh, either way is bugged because if it displays 200 million there and then costs 54, that, that is a bug. And the other direction is also a bug. So, uh, yeah, uh, can't, can't, really, can't really get around that, can you? Uh, we do need to refresh everything because of that because of the add-on. And here it also states that's 60 million, so yeah, I assume refresh plus the add-on, which supposedly is 54 million. And uh, Okay, yeah, do we want to... Oh, we, we do have the potential of upgrading our automation level as well. Let's do that while we are at it, because this is kind of a unique opportunity in that sense, that we are upgrading the factory. So there we go. Let's see how expensive this gets. Oh, the engineering time isn't too bad. Three years um, with the advanced safety being put in there from a decade that we have no familiarity from. That's fine. And I can up the tooling a bit. Yeah, I, th I think we are pretty competitive at the moment uh, still. So, I mean, this car also has good add-ons and, and so on. Oh, not good add-ons, good, good components. Hmm. 40, I don't really want to go that high. This is almost like a new model. Uh, pressure slider is quite low on the other hand. Okay, I think this is a good compromise. Upping the tooling a little bit and then reliability up so that we continue to dominate. And that is some very nice competitiveness numbers. And what is going on? Yeah, the engine. We haven't set up the engine yet. And we are going to build a QA testing for that one too. So they have uh, shut down at the same time. That will also make it a lot more efficient. Uh, let's sign in the engine there. Oof, okay, automation level just 40. Now we can use this to upgrade that and the building and tooling and everything. Yep, these settings are looking good. Uh, quite expensive, but this hasn't been upgraded. Uh, for a while now, and we do need the the speed up. Otherwise, the level two factory, uh, medium two factory, is running away with its production. Oh wow! Okay, that's cheap. That is really damn cheap. Uh, six point six months only. 
where we can optimize the engineering, of course, or the tooling, and then reliability can go up to 75. Of course, that costs a bit more. Pressure is already so low. Well, this has been prepared nicely. We might even want to up quality even more. I know Hans Dieter would be all over it. On the other hand, upping quality will also mean that we are upping production units, which will decrease the volume of production. So let's leave it there. And now we can just decrease funding because we don't have engineering, uh, engineer happiness just yet until we reach a level that is reasonable, 600k. Yeah, pretty good. Very cheap. And we do see that our production holds up. Oh, it's looking nice, but let's deactivate the factory costs and the tooling costs as well. Yeah, I think so. Let's put it in for 900 bucks there and then we get our margin on top. That should be fine. Forecaster screen. Um, well, yes, we do need to up that though. Oh, that is solid looking. That is really solid looking at 15% minimum margin. Very nice numbers. And not so much for the wagon, really, but uh, the sedan is holding up like crazy. And look at these numbers. 740 million are in the five year span. Yeah, yeah, I would take that. And that is with um, just this margin and a little bit extra. And that little bit extra is just from the first year where the uh, sales calculator does calculate a higher margin than uh, anticipated. Um, because it is at target shifts or uh, even above target shifts. That is looking fantastic. What a great facelift this was going to be, hopefully. Unless it fails hard and burns. Uh, do we want to take out a loan? Ooh, now it gets interesting. Can we, can we pull this off without it? So this is a combined cost of 277 million. I think we can just deactivate this and skip paying that amount of loan interest. That would be nice. It would be more efficient. Yes. Okay, I think I'm going to sign off on this. This is looking fantastic. Agreed. Yes, it is done. Whew. Scary, scary. But I think this will be good. Okay, and I think that should be it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.